Merrick. Well, you you have Mandy Merrick one headphones. Ooh, really sexy. nice, expensive ones. Very nice Very and nice. expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They sound great. I've, I've heard, you heard them. heard them? I have. I heard them. I, I went to the launch party. That's right. But I want to hear them in a quiet, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, isolated yeah, yeah. room because I heard it at like a... <laughs> right. like having around and I'm like eating steak. I'm like, oh, is this uh, A5? Oh, this is A5. Oh, man, this sound great. I'm like, my senses are going crazy. That's such a Manny American party. It's, it's like, like, here's the best headphones you've ever heard, and here's the best steak you've a, ever had. Here's an A5 and, taco. Yeah, yeah, here's an A5 taco, and here's some like really nice bourbon. You're just like, oh, God. Everybody who grew up with me, you know, I have always been like, go. Let's go. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sitting here with one of the greatest mixing engineers of all time, a dear friend of mine, ladies and gentlemen. His name is Manny Marroquin. Yeah, buddy. Thank Are you for having me. Always amazing chat and thank you. you know, can I, we curse? Yeah, yeah, you can just. We're, we're love, just. Love, this love is love the hang. It. Yeah, this is skin hot in here. So can this I take is, off all my clothes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I brought a thin robe. If oh, you'd like oh, to replace, we should, can we take a break and change? Real quick? <laughs> Little wardrobe break. Yeah, I so this is going to be a fun hour. <laughs> <laughs> He just had a question about if I went to culinary school. <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> As you guys can tell, we've never met before. Never. Um, <laughs> Manny and I are close friends. Really great. Really cherish you as a friend. I love our friendship. Thank you. Likewise. And we've had so many amazing conversations. That's why I was like, dude, we got to get you. I want to get you on the pod yeah. so we can share a lot of our conversation for other people. Because we don't always goof around. We do have no, very, no, we're very serious, serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. business conversations. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we never talk about EQing, actually. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 100 hertz. Yeah, I want to be the only podcast where you don't talk about yes. EQing. Yeah, fuck that. We have beautiful politics in this room. Let's not talk about the amazing politics and Neves. No. I thought this was a coffee table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an expensive one. I'm like, do you lay on this bed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all these buttons on it. <laughs> You know, this one, funny enough, is uh, it's the duality. But when you go to the other side of Larrabee, we have K's, and those fuckers get so hot. Really? And it's I, I feel like we should have a, a section in, you know, at the store where it's like the studio section. Because you got to be able to take shit off and put it back on because it goes hot, cold, hot, cold. So this <laughs> room actually stays pretty, uh, it's a consistent temperature. I love this room. So we're in yeah. Studio 6 at Larrabee Studio Studios. Studio 6. Former, for, formerly known as uh, Schnee Studio. And Sh Bill Schnee is living legend. Shout out to my friend Bill. I mean, if everything's been recorded in here from from The Greatest Love of All to Steely Dan to I Want a New Drug was written out there. I mean, he did a bunch of rec amazing records. A true sonic temple. Yeah, I love and this And it was place. a private studio for since 81, up until five years ago when we took over. You took it over five years ago? Just about. took about a year to kind of, you know, redo a few things. But it's honestly one of the best rooms that I've ever heard. I'm I just so lucky to be, you know, be here. I love this room. Yeah. Yeah, so you got uh, six studios, technically seven with seven. Verse. Seven. Seven Well, studios. seven with the uh, mastering room. So we have, oh, that's, we call so that Studio eight. A. Yep. Yeah, so eight, eight studios, studios in this Larrabee block of a compound <laughs> right. that you have here. <laughs> Larrabee and Verse. Oh, yeah, yeah. Larrabee yeah. and Verse. Right, so we're going to talk all about Verse. We're going to get yeah, to that. Yeah, we're yeah. going to get to the uh, the next chapter of Manny's culinary life. culinary school The chapter. culinary school <laughs> chapter. <laughs> we're joking because people were Somebody DMing me like, ask him about if you went to culinary <laughs> school. And I was like, you don't want that. I'm not yeah. going <laughs> to ask him about that. It's not the greatest story. Mm, it's not. No. Um, all right, dude. Well, congratulations on your ever-expanding plethora you. of Grammys that you have collected sitting in mm. your basement mm. um, that you actually, I saw, put up finally for uh, for your Grammy party. Oh, yeah. Finally, some, some of Manny's Grammys. <laughs> if you don't know Manny Marroquin, he's the most humble man I've ever met in my life. <laughs> Arguably too humble, I would say. It's like, bro, put out a couple of the Grammys <laughs> for the people. <laughs> there's no plaques on these walls. You walk up and down Manny's <laughs> studio. There's no plaques and there's no Grammys. And he has more plaques and Grammys than not than anybody because Beyonce and uh, um, Al Schmidt. This guy, Michael Jackson. And Quincy and Jones. And yeah, <laughs> only like four people have more than you. Only four people. <laughs> <laughs> 
But uh, you, yeah, he, does, he he likes he likes he doesn't like having them out. His studio is all about like uh, feng shui, creativity, yeah, creativity, yeah, yeah, yeah. beautiful. Uh, the the I love just walking the halls of Larrabee. Feels so. You know, I never wanted that artist that you know a new artist to be in Studio One. They go to the bathroom and there's Michael Jackson, Madonna, and all these other amazing plaques. And I don't want that person to be intimidated. I don't want them to be necessarily inspired either. You right. know, I want them just to. Just take that, just take it out, you know, just be yourself. Hopefully you can focus on what you're trying to do and not, not necessarily be intimidated or inspired by a Michael Jackson plaque. You yeah. Know? And I feel like that's, and that's why there's all, you know, I always wanted to feel like an art gallery yeah. when you come in, you know, it's it just, does. it just feels like, you know, creativity, like yeah. we support creativity. We want you to really be yourself. Yeah. Right. Right when you walk into Larrabee, you, I mean, that beautiful new desk you have. Yeah. I love that desk. And you got that art piece on the right that's gorgeous. And then you walk through the hallways and it's like open and then there's plants and it's, yep. it feels, it feels good. It feels different. It feels alive. It, yeah, it, it feels, feels alive. alive. You know, we've been to so many studios where, which are great rooms and just, there's a heavy energy, right? Yeah. Heavy, heavy energy. So I always wanted it to be open, creative, uh, and support that. Just keep yeah. supporting that, you know? That's interesting. I've always wondered why you have no plaques. I always just thought it was because you're too humble. <laughs> but I like the oh thought boy. of it. Yeah, because, you know, come to think of it, when I go into these studios, if I'm recording somewhere and, yeah, and I see the Thriller plaque, I'm, like, distracted yeah, yeah. by it. Yeah. And I take a photo and I post mm -hmm. it and I send it to someone. And then now I'm in this whole... Right there, you're in like, a different yeah. state of mind, right? Yeah. And, and you know how it is when you're in, you know, when the mic is on and you hit record. Man, that's a whole different mindset that you have to be on and... Less distractions, the better. 100%. You know, and a lot of them do it to flex as well. Look, yeah. we all want to flex every once in a while. For sure. Uh, like when I get my jam card rolling, you know, someday I'll have that. And Look I'm going to be soon. flexing. Yeah. But, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we want you to be just as creative as we can to, and provide the space for that. Yeah. You know? That's amazing. Well, I feel it when I come here. Yeah. Look, I've been in Studio 2 for, gosh, 23 years now? 23? maybe 24 years yeah. so it's been the most amazing creative environment i mean gosh i've mixed so many records there <laughs> so you've mixed many, so many records so many. there so you've been in that room for 20 years so this room so studio two so that's manny's room right because that's my your, original room yep you have your yep. studio seven plus a <laughs> studios in this compound <laughs> seven, seven plus plus a plus a <laughs> and uh and then, but two is yours, and I love your room. Your room is special. And now I have my Atmos room, too, and which is incredible. It's yeah. one of the, you know, it's an amazing, amazing room. You've blown my mind in the Atmos room, for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy, right? Yeah, it's pretty so amazing. beautiful. It sounds incredible. It feels good in there. It doesn't feel like an Atmos room. Like, you don't see the speakers. I like hiding yeah. speakers. So yeah. we hit a few of them, you know, behind the fabric, and it just feels right in there. Which is yeah. also so different for an Atmos room. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we got plants in there. Like, yeah. I don't know how you do, but you yeah. do. Like UV lights or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Just it's, trade uh, them out every couple yeah. of days. Just trade the plants out. Yeah, yeah, You got to take care of those beautiful plants, man. So Studio 2 has pumped out so much, especially so I feel oh. like recently, man, you keep just winning Grammys every year. You won another three Grammys this year. You won, uh, you got Record of the Year with Lizzo. Which is the first time I've been on that maybe, gosh, of 15, 17, 20, I don't even know. Never won that. That's a tough one to win. Wait, that's how many times classic. you've been nominated for that? Yeah, at least, yeah. It seems like every <laughs> other year, it's, you know, it's at least 15. Wow, and that was your With first time winning record of the year. First time winning Nice. Record. Congratulations. Man, thank you. Thank All this you. time, whenever I say congratulations to you for winning Grammys every year, I, I'm just, I'm like, he doesn't care. But now this I one, care. I feel like you no, care. No, 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 I do care. You know, <laughs> I, I care, I care. I was telling a story earlier where, you know, my mentor, my idol, not necessarily mentor, but my idol growing up was Al Schmidt, yeah. rest in peace. And I sat next to him <clears throat> 15 years ago at the Grammys, and and he, I'm like, man, you got 20 Grammys, you should rub some of that. And I won three that night, which wow. was, was like, was amazing. So I, at that point, I had four, and I'm thinking, this guy's got 20. That number was just out of reach. I mean, yeah. that's like a dream, you know? So <clears throat> now having 17, it's just like, it blows my mind. I mean, you know, look, I come from very humble beginning. So uh, this is just amazing. I, I take it all in. Because, you know, listen, there's going to be another chapter where, where I'm not going to be doing this, and I want to yeah. enjoy every fucking second of it, you know? 
So, yeah, we'll get to the next chapter, but for now, okay, so now you have 17 Grammys. Yeah, which blows my mind. You're actually. three away from, <laughs> from your your idol, right, who is the most Grammy award-winning engineer and mixer. I think so. I think yeah. so. I haven't looked it up, but he's definitely it. up there. I Googled you, it. You go the, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is he really? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Wow. So you're, you're three away from that, which is, yeah, it's amazing, man. So here you are. And like, I mean, you won three this year. Who knows? You make it seem pretty easy these listen, days. I've been a loser a lot of times, yeah. way more than winners. So, yeah. you know, I, that's why I, it's amazing to win them because I've, oh, maybe next year, yeah. <laughs> like 0 for 3, up oh, 0 for 4. So I've been on a losing streak. And What does it feel like to lose a Grammy? Man, it sucks <laughs> like when you, you're like again there's some you know uh, i won't mention the artist but fuck it doesn't feel good yeah but you get dressed up and you do the red carpet and you're sitting there and you're like ah. no matter how many times you say oh, i don't care you, you do care everybody cares in that room you want that you know? win you want of course yeah. you want the win yeah, yeah. everybody yeah. wants to win your peers are all around you're like yeah. oh you're against some you know some amazing artists you're like but there's that one chance it could win. And then you start, you know, halfway through the telecast, you're like, hmm, maybe this will be the, the one. And and the winner is not you. And you're like, oh, fuck, okay, fine. <laughs> maybe next year. So I've had a good run in the last year and a half. Yeah, so, okay, so this year you won three and you got uh, Kendrick Lamar, Rosalia, and Lizzo. Three of my favorite albums. I mean, I've been... <sighs> You know, Love all three so of those albums. Lucky to be, you know, in the room with those yeah. amazing artists, you know, and uh, yeah, they're all three very different and unique albums. Rosalie is pushing the edge. I mean, she's in Latin in Latin music. She's kind of like the Kanye, right? She's really, really pushing it. Kendrick is Kendrick. 100%. I mean, <laughs> you know, and Lizzo is an amazing pop R and B album, right? So three sort of different genres. So how do you approach with artists that sound so different executing their vision? You know, I always say now it's it's like cheating now because we have these amazing roughs, right? Yeah. I feel like our job now is to, A, I always say, don't fuck it up, man. <laughs> don't screw it up. <laughs> uh, but really it's just, man, with Kendrick, for example, we met... And we sat there for three hours just talking about, you know, where you know, our beginnings are, you know, just n no music at all. No, we talked about each other to each other. You know, we had a, an amazing conversation because, you know, he was coming off of, he went some, something different, not better or worse or not worse, but not better, but just different. Different. So he uh, wanted to meet me. We sat there and he, I got to tell you, he's a, he studies every nuance, every movement, every word. And uh, by the end of it, he's like, let's give a song. Let's do one song and see what happens. So we did, you know, we worked on one song. And for me, you could tell an artist was wanting something slightly different, right? Yeah. So that's the psychology. So what we do is half of it is mind games. The other half is hopefully some talent here and there and some luck, a lot of luck. Yeah. But with him, it was about... <clears throat> It's such a deep album. If you, yeah. It's a concept album. I mean, if you guys, 10 years from now, pe some people are going to get it. They're like, oh, this is what's happening. There's a lot of Easter eggs along the way that when people start discovering them, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have new life to new listeners. And For sure. Just, but he won't talk about them, you know, which is a shame. I wish he could just go on and I wish people would hear what he would, what he's told me about the album and how this song connects to this song and this lyric connects to it's an answer, it's a question answer. It's, it's like, I mean, can people please find out? Because yeah, it would blow your mind. So for me, I'm already mixing every conversation. I'm already I'm already like, okay, this needs d depth, needs ups and downs. We need to really move. And sometimes the, the vocal's really dark, really moody. Other times it's really bright, really punchy and it's just capturing that emotion of each song so for me this album is a book and each song is a chapter yeah and each you know some chapters are fun and others are deep and heavy and and others are anything in between so it's really like psychologically you're thinking about the emotions and the mm. different colors and feel and 
but you got to do it without ev- anyone noticing, which is so crazy, right? That's the For beauty sure. of what we do. It's just like, let's just make it, when I listen from the beginning to end, I'm engaged with the songs, not the sound. So I always say I try to do sa- uh, emotion and not necessarily a sound. Yeah. Because you know, nobody wants to hear a sound. I mean, some of our favorite records, some of them don't even sound that good. They just feel amazing. Mm-hmm. And then they capture that emotion, right? So for me, with Kendra was really capturing that emotion. What is one of the Easter eggs? Do you remember any? Well, you know, it's it's in there. It's, it, they're all there. You know, it's basically, it's, you know, talking about culture in the beginning. And then you realize you're going through sort of a depression that what brought you to this point in life the pandemic hits you start questioning just like we all did and how now you're you know you're expecting your first baby that's changes people's lives obviously and how do you navigate as being this Kendrick Lamar how do you navigate life through the ups and downs maybe him parting ways with some of his team uh having a family being in the lowest you know in in our history and world history I don't know if we're ever going to go through a global pandemic again the way we did and questioning your as a man your your you know your mental health like yeah. you know as minority men we we you know we don't we can't show emotion you know and uh and how do you show emotion right so he just put it all in there and him seeing a you know psychiatrist and which is not again it's not normal uh and him getting help the right help and him just saying this is why i think i'm the way i am today as a man and this is how i can heal and not repeat the cycle i mean there's so many of them and if you listen get a glass of wine whatever listen to it with headphones and if you look at it that way you'll you'll hear them they're there yeah, they're not yeah. you know uh you just got to look for them you yeah. know and so it's that process of him going through a metamorphosis and hopefully becoming a man that a family man with a career, you know, and and having had all these issues, hopefully behind. So that alone is a freaking. I told him that we'll see the the Broadway play in ten years. For you know? sure. I mean, you definitely successfully accomplished that because you feel it immediately when you put that album mm. on. Like, it's a heavy album, right? It's a heavy album. And United yeah. in Grief, yeah. right? Like you start with United in wow. Grief, and you're just like. Yeah, I'll never forget hearing it for the first time, mm-hmm. like being mm-hmm. a huge Kendrick fan, anticipating mm-hmm. a new album, mm-hmm. wa- waiting for it, knowing it's going to come, hearing for a few years it's coming, you know, like everything mm-hmm. and be like, okay, cool. And then like you put on track one and United in Grief hits you and you're just like, oh, mm-hmm. even the lyric, like I grieve different and and just the, the beat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's the good and what evil. What you did right? to the beat, <laughs> the sound of that beat. like Shout everything. out to Soundwave because oh. he's, he's amazing. And Soundwave it, killed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we it. kept pushing it, pushing it. And then we, is this too much? Let's back it down. No, let's yeah. push it more. Let's, so again, that good and evil in every record. Right? Yeah. Every record I mix, I always look for a good and evil. Mm. You know, and Within each section too, right? Because it's all about emotion, like subtle emotion. Like when you listen to some your body language should constantly be changing whether you are conscious or, or not. That's what kind of we're playing, you know, we're mind fucking people and the thinking there with obviously lyrics and harmony and frequencies and all this stuff, rhythm. and But we're really just trying to get you to kind of feel somewhat of an emotion that's there, but just emphasizing it. You know, I say this really silly, silly uh, comparison to, you're in space and you have a toddler and you're holding their hand and they you let go of their hand and they're floating away. And then you grab the hand and you yank it towards you, right? And then you let it go again. And you keep doing that over and over again. Because this toddler or kid, wow. it's kind of going floating away and then boom, I want your attention again and you yank it, you're like, right? And that's what we do maybe with hooks or bridges or sounds. Like sometimes there's sounds that don't necessarily, don't necessarily sound good. Right. It could be a snare that's super, super bright, but that's kind of to get your attention away from maybe this section or maybe this lyric or maybe the production needs help. So we alter your, oh, now I'm listening, paying attention to this. That's because I'm masking something else and the complete opposite too. So you got to be able to keep yanking your listener so that, and then you got to be able to let them go and trust that Mm -hmm. they're going to be there when you pull them up towards you again, you know? 
That's amazing. When, <laughs> when you look for the good and evil in, in every song or every project, where, are you diving in lyrically? Is that just the feeling or where are you, where are you going for that? It really the, depends. I mean, uh, some, you know, some songs don't, some of them are obvious. Like, yeah. And then others, you kind of got to search and like, perfect example is a John Mayer song, Gravity, right? Mm. Um, that song, when I, that was the first song I ever, ever worked uh, with that that that's when we met John and I, and um, I remember mixing it and taking all the effects off, right? And I didn't know why. Subconsciously, I mean, gravity is fucking heavy, right? So I took all the effects off. John comes in, uh, listens to the mix. Steve Jordan's producing. He's he's on the road with Clapton. He's in the south of France. It's like you know <laughs> by the beach. And like so, we <laughs> call him. We're like, we got the mix. Played it for John, listens to it, loves it, because it's really, I mean, to me, that song was like, how would the Roots play, you know? How would, if John got together with the Roots, right, how yeah. would that sound? Because before that, your body is a wonderland. You know, it's very poppy, very singer-songwriter. Well, this song is like, how do we give him a different type of sound? Because he's searching for that. Yeah. So gravity, so the vocal is dry. I mean, bone dry. And he's like, he's like, what do you have on my vocal? I'm like... I don't know. Let me see. <laughs> and I'm looking at the channel and I have no effects on it. I go, it's dry. And at this point, John's like, what do you mean dry? Yeah. Like dry. There's nothing. Not, not even a slap or a short re It's like, no, there's nothing. And that made him really uncomfortable. So the left brain, I mean, the right brain, your creative side is like, oh, it feels great. But then your right side, I mean, left side kicks in. It's like, wait a minute. No, I've never had a dry vocal. And wow. we roll with it. Uh, he plays, he, he called me from the video shoot and he's like, man, can we try some reverb on it? I just want to hear what it sounds, what it sounds like. So I gave him one with an AMS reverb, another one with a 480, uh, with a, uh, yeah, 480 and, uh, give, gave him two options, right? I like option B, let's roll with that. And I'm like, all right, cool. So then he's playing the, the album, the finished album for Donnie Einer at the time. And Donnie heard gravity and he's like. To his, you know, credit, he's like, wait a minute, sounds different. So he's, you know, getting the demo or whatever, the rough mix or or the first mix. He plays it on the CD. He's like, that's the song. That's the mix. And he calls me. He's like, Donnie heard it. And we're rolling with the dry vocal. But imagine at this point, he's never, ever heard himself that dry or dry at all. And I'm like, you're such a badass singer that, yeah. yes. But it came from the subconscious of, like, gravity being a heavy theme, you know, and the, yeah. the lyrics. So to answer your question, that was one of those examples of, you know, it kind of influences, you know, again, gravity, it influences me to be, I don't know, take some chances, you know. And thankfully we won on that one. There's been others that I haven't been that successful, but at least you tr that's our job, to give you different emotions, hopefully. And and it ultimately is up to the to, to the artist to decide whether they want it or not, or if they want to try something different, or, or you know, or if yeah, or we can take it from here and build on it, you know. So every day, every song, every artist is just a different journey, which is why it's ex so exciting. And I'm assuming it's also how the mix was surrounding the vocal that made the dry vocal work. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, if you didn't have the vocal chops, if you didn't have the colors around that vocal, if you didn't have that snare that just, that kick and snare is like, boom, two, two, you know, it's like, if you didn't have that, then you would pay maybe more attention to the dry vocal and think, oh, that vocal sounds weird, right? But again, going back to the mind fucking that those drums sound so hard for yeah. someone like a John Mayer yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah. You got to think at the time coming from this singer songwriter background. Yeah. Uh, that was a, ballsy move and i appreciate him try, trying to evolve as an artist right? yeah that ended up being the gravity the yeah drums absolutely yeah exactly and the lyrics i mean yeah for those of you that haven't heard that i mean please go go listen to it yeah it's, it's, it's an incredible. incredible song yeah so um to go back to uh mr R mr morale and the big steppers so mm -hmm. You have this meeting with uh, with Kendrick. You guys hang out for a few hours. You talk about it, and then you try a song. So now, and then it works out, and you're getting into it. So let's say with for United in Grief, because that is such a heavy song and a dynamic song, right? And it's an uh, opener. 
when that is handed to you, what are the feelings that you get before the mix as you're listening to it? And then as you start from wherever you start from with the mix, and then how does it change when you're done and you're listening back to your mix? So with Kendrick, the beauty about that album is, you know, nowadays we live in the world of roughs, which is great. Listen, sometimes it makes our job much easier. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't because sometimes they sound really bad and you got to roll up the sleeves. <laughs> You know, and other times, <laughs> other times you're like, oh shit, I may go have dinner. <laughs> I may yeah, have yeah. time for dinner. Easy gig. Yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, Kendra just, just said, look, man, don't listen to the roughs. Just go for it. And, I'm, and I haven't been told that in a long time. You know, maybe people say it and then they, oh, let's refer, oh, oh yeah, my vocal has this reverb or this, uh, that treatment. Let's listen to that. And I'm totally fine with it. Yeah. But this was so liberating. I had the most fun with Kendrick's album than I have had in a long time. He was just like, be yourself. Give yeah. me you. And I came for you. Don't don't give me what you think I want. Fuck. I don't know if anyone's ever said that to me. The way he said it to me. He's the ultimate, you know, mani mind manipulator, right? And for me to have this track. And I listen to the rough, just see what the feel, the emotion. And then I just, I'm still on the desk. I start mixing. I just start live and EQing. And just, there's this moment that you're just really thinking from the right brain and you're just going. And you don't know why you're doing certain things. You don't know why. Maybe it's the 10, 20,000 hours, you know. Mm. But you're just kind of going based on the emotion and what you want to keep hearing coming out of those speakers. And I would start every mix on the mains, which sometimes, you know, most of the time I don't. So I, was, I wanted to get the bottom right, and, and I knew that some songs were going to be a little thinner. I knew some of them were going to hit really hard. And and um, so a song like that, you just kind of start, and you go, and it takes you on a journey. And sometimes yeah. you gotta, kind of got to get back on track, and then sometimes you go drift away. But discovering, that moment of discovering the song for the first time. Then you sit, I sit with the lyrics for a pass, and I know exactly you know i think i know what he's talking about sometimes sometimes it's more obvious than others but then you just go through this journey and then you you know i always say with mixing there's imagine there's a, th a million little white flags coming up right yeah and every pass you're getting rid of those some of those flags right and pretty soon you, you're you're left with a dozen of them so you're getting closer emotionally and then when there's no flags that's where you go okay i think i'm done and i don't the old me, I would be trying to search for more flags. I'm like, where the fuck are yeah, the flags? There's got to be another one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, with experience, I guess, you just you just kind of have, you just stop. And you're like, yeah. you walk away from it, and then you come listen to it again. Again, maybe one flag or two. or But now you're done. So then I call Dot, and, like, I'm ready. Show Shows up, and listen to it, and, man... It was one of those albums where I don't know if he had any changes on a lot of that stuff. Amazing. You know? so, so those are, 90% of them are first mixes. Maybe one is like a vocal up, vocal down. Yeah. Wave would be maybe a kick up or down. But that was That's, that was it, man. Yeah. Those are like a lot of just. Are you ever nervous for those moments? Playing back to the artist, playing back to Kendrick? You know, and I always say if you're not nervous, you don't care. Mm. fuck that you know yeah. i'm nervous every time like, yeah. someone walks in just because i the bar is so high yeah i don't want to disappoint yeah you know and I, i'm nervous because i don't know if what i've done they're gonna like right and i care too much yeah if i didn't care i'd be like yeah whatever i don't care what you have to say you're the man man <laughs> you know I, yeah you should get nervous yeah. you should get nervous if you don't then fucking feel that you know go 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 on vacation go for a a sprint or go <laughs> yeah go for a jog or do something but you should care and you should feel nervous because you want to mm. you want to give the artist what they want yeah you know a lot of guys they think it's what we do you know fuck that no we're here for them we're yeah. here for to serve as them for sure. their vision and for hopefully sure. we can help we're here to facilitate that you know yeah. some artists can't i want it to sound like the south of france uh, 85 degrees on my convertible S, you know, SL with a silk, silk scarf. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I'm like, shit, I think I know what you mean, yeah. but I don't know why or how, yeah. but I think I know what you want. Go for the feeling. Yeah, exactly. And, and they don't, they, and then other, other artists, producers will come in like, you know, I want it to hit, like put more hundred Hertz on this. 
take 1K. They're very technical, right? Yeah. And my job is to for them to not think all technical and to go with feel as well, right? Yeah. So you, you know, every artist, every producer, every label, A and R manager, whoever's making that the final call, yeah, you you got to get in their head and see <clears throat> what they're trying to hear, and then you facilitate. For sure. Whether you agree with it or not. There's sure. a lot of times where I disagree with certain things, and it is what it is, right? Yeah. I always say their name goes in the front. Our name's fuck. You can't even find it in that nowadays. Good luck. Are you ever intimidated by the magnitude of a song that is given to you to mix? Fuck, man. That's a, such a good question. Uh, yeah, I have been before in, in the past. We Are Young, fun. Remember that song? Yeah, huge anthem. So Janik came to the studio, played it for me. John Janik, the president. Oh, sorry, yep. Yeah. <laughs> In case you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> president of the label. Yeah, it's just the president. Yeah. So he played it for me, and I, for the only time that I can remember, I was so intimidated by this song. Mm. He's like, what would you do to it? And I'm like, nothing. I, I Even if I got it, I think I would have screwed it up. It was so big. Yeah. But, you know, there's songs that you, you, you know, and I and I like that. I like that you feel a little intimidation, you know. Yeah, we've done this so long and rep, you know, you know the repetition. You gotta, you need something to make you go, you know. Like, yeah. All right, cool. This is it's gonna be a good day. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of the time, like even when I talk to you, I'm like, "What are you working on right now?" You're like, "This artist, this artist, this artist." <laughs> I'm just like. Dude, like the, a lot of, yeah, of course you have like the new artists that are about to blow up where you're mm -hmm. the first person mixing what's going to mm -hmm. be a huge song. But then a lot of the times it's these massive artists yeah, yeah. that are like, this is their comeback album, yep. Manny. And they put yep. it in your hands. Yeah, man. I mean, can you imagine? I'm like fucking the, one of the luckiest guys alive. <laughs> you yeah. know, like for them, I, I, for them to trust me with their baby. I always say we're expensive babysitters. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like for you to trust me with your baby. I mean, that's like, that's a huge compliment. So yeah. I should be nervous when they walk in. Cause I want to make sure that they're happy. Cause if you're trusting me with that, I don't want to disappoint yeah. ever. So it's their soul that they're yeah. giving to you. I mean, come on. It's yeah. like, so yeah, no, so it's a, an, an amazing, it's, it's an honor. It's such a great compliment that people just keep coming back, you know? And, so and, cool, uh, and I give them a little piece of me. I always say, every song, man, I try to leave a tiny piece of my heart, you know, yeah. just a tiny bit. So I hope I have more heart left. But <laughs> you but definitely, yeah. you definitely give me the feelings when I listen to all your mixes, always. <laughs> and a lot of the times, I don't even realize it's you. And then I find out later, I'm like, oh, of course that was me. <laughs> Of course it was. I didn't know when Kendrick came out. I mean, you and right. I have been talking. And yeah, I didn't, yeah. You know, we, were talk, we talk regularly, yeah. and I had no idea you did that. And then when it, I was so excited to hear it, and I heard it, and I was just like, oh, this is fucking slamming. Yeah, yeah. And then I see you post like, thank you, Kendrick, for trusting me. And I'm like, of course. <laughs> and I'm like, what did you do, one song? I'm like, no, he did like every song on the album except for one. Or so. He did like 18 songs on the album. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that was a good journey. You know? So, okay, so on the other side of this yeah. year's uh, Grammy, so you also got nominated for, you did DJ Khaled. Yeah, yeah. my God, <laughs> that's my dude. And so God did the yeah. hip hop anthem in a whole different way. <laughs> <laughs> so so get so we were like at the Grammys red carpet, big artists obviously, the one that I saw get way more attention and had a fucking a entourage of people that wanted to meet him was Khaled, and there were some pretty big artists next to him and everyone wanted to everyone wanted to say hi. <laughs> everyone wanted to say God did the Grammys. he yeah. by far yeah. by far wow. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't yeah. believe it. Well, because he's probably also less intimidating than like Beyonce. Sure. Beyonce and Jay-Z, you're right. like, oh, it's a little intimidating. But you know what? I'm sure. More, he's got that energy, even though he also has an intimidating, big, big presence. Like, But he is authentic. Yeah. He is as, I love him, by the way. Yeah. Love, love. We have a, an amazing relationship. Uh, we've done, been working together for a long time and- Man, he is just authentic. He yeah. is. He'll tell you exactly what he. You know, he doesn't sugarcoat anything. He tells you exactly the way it is in a very professional man. If you think about it, what hip hop star has embraced his family in the past, like yeah. as much as he has? Yeah. Like with his kid, he even names his album. I mean, think about it for a second. Like yeah. There's everyone's had families, but there's something that he embraces. He wants to change the perception of. You know the public, like yeah. oh okay, you're a 
hip hop superstar. Therefore, that's who you are. No, 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 no. Hang on. I'm way more than that. I'm an, an amazing A&R. Yeah. I'm an amazing father. I'm an amazing husband. I, you know, there's, I'm, I'm a businessman. I'm an entrepreneur. To me, that's like, and there's been before him, obviously, but the way he's presenting it to the world, he's like, this is who I am. That authenticity, you can see why he is who he is. And mm -hmm. people are like, well, what does he do anyway? It's like, you know, all the <laughs> haters, like, who's Khaled? What does he do? Does he play anything? Does he produce? Is he? You don't have to. You don't have to. He is who he's he a, is. He's a star. He is a star. Yeah. He's the greatest A and R guy that yeah. I know. And congrats to him on his new position over at Def Jam. That's exactly who he was going to be, and who it's perfect for him. Yeah. I mean, he so so it's like, you know, and then they go, oh yeah, I, I get it now, I get it. But there's a lot of haters that don't think he. And I'm the complete. There's a lot of artists that you like that are gonna be here and gone to here today, gone tomorrow. He's here to stay. Yeah. He, so he's we only can gone there and then just stayed and climbed. Right? Yeah. He's climbed the yeah, whole yeah. time. Greatest marketing guy. Yeah. Uh, alive. He's a magnet. You can't help but watch. I'm so engaged it. in yeah, his yeah, yeah, yeah. life there's and his no, content and his sayings. Yeah. I want to no say BS, them. No <laughs> bullshit about it, right? He is exactly yeah. who I can't he is. order lobster anymore yeah, yeah. without being like, tell him to bring out the lobster. <laughs> I can't do like anything that he says. I'm just like, I just want to say that. Uh, yeah. You know, like, I mean, God like the, the, should the, be like a whole, you know, it's going to be obviously merch and it's going to be a film. The, oh, God, God, God did is God know? did is massive. Yeah. Uh, we the best. I mean, there's a million, we, yeah. there's a major key, like all the ones that happened from years ago mm -hmm. till now. And mm -hmm. now he did one the other day that I don't even think is going to be one that he was intending on sticking, but he was like on his jet and they showed him the budget and he was just like budget approved. <laughs> And I'm just like, and dude, and I've had like, like several founder friends text yeah, me that be like, yo, that's how you got to say it now. So now I'm just going to be like, budget approved every single time someone's like, hey, is this yeah. approved? Just that's anything. That's who he is, man. That's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've never seen it. Oh, man. So many people want, want, wanting to at least get a picture with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you well, ever listen to, to him? So, like, do you. <laughs> I would love to have the stems that you have to even just listen to only his vocals, oh, God. <laughs> just his God did. And just like in the track and then you, you getting to manipulate them and EQ them. However you even want that song. Like yeah. he's got his whole, like, you know, I mean, that's an amazing song. Yeah. The song's amazing. With Jay Z doing what? 90 bars. And yeah. Like, and one the of his Friday, best, that Friday person. hook yeah. is amazing. Mm -hmm. I love his voice mm -hmm. and it's just like, to have someone else say your like yeah. your word, but you have someone else say it with this incredible low baritone mm -hmm. voice. It's like so soulful, and so, that vocal is yeah. And he's uh, he's starting his next album, so he's, of course he's just moving. Yeah, like striking. How many ad libs are on? If you are there, Easter egg ad libs from Khaled in those records. I wish, man. He's not that. He's not the Easter egg type of guy. He's like, if it's on there, you're gonna hear it. He's like, turn them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Begin is like, you know, you're like three dB, four dB louder than anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want people to feel me. I'm like, okay, all right, all right, Khaled. But that's who he is. I love yeah. that. You know, you're three, four dB. You just screaming, yeah. God did. Yeah, yeah. perfect, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even more. Give me four more. <laughs> like, no, he's he, he's one of a kind, and more people should embrace that type of uh, yeah. you know, mentality. Like entrepreneur again, an ent entrepreneur, true entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah and everything yeah. he's doing with uh, shoes is everything oh, is everything. like is on such a high level. Oh my god, such a high level. Anything he touches. Yeah, with your diversity in terms of you mixing rock or pop or whatever or hip hop or all these all these different like the new Paramore album like the new Paramore album that's congrats one of my on favorite that albums congrats on that Thank too you. that one's popping off that, that album just came is out incredible in yeah I haven't I have to oh, dive into you it got, you got to dive into it it's one of my favorites so how different is it for you when you're mixing an album that has one or two producers on it versus one that has ten to twenty producers on it you know it's <clears throat> You just follow the song. I mean, you know, I always say that it's kind of cheesy, but it's true. The song, it mixes itself, yeah. right? Uh, and if you follow that, if you keep, I constantly remind myself, the song is mi mixing itself. You know, And if you follow that simple rule, nine out of ten times, you're, you're going to be on the same page with the producer. Mm. Maybe, yeah, sure, there may be a 10% of the time that you don't hear it exactly the way they're hearing it, and you... And kind of work on, on it together and hope you, you 
you reach, you know, that goal. But it just mixes itself. And then, so the follow-up question is like, well, how do you get there, right? Yeah. How do you, simple, fuck, I'm a, I'm a music fanatic still. So yeah. I listen to all genres. In today's world, we're, we're so lucky that we're in a genreless world, right? Yeah. If you think about it. Growing up, it was like the stoners were in that corner and like hip hop here, the nerds there, and they all listen to one genre, yeah. right? Now everyone's listening to listening to any everything yeah you know, even which languages is you don't know yeah. yeah and it's great music yeah. right now is so exciting yeah it's so ex yeah sure the business of music is always going to be the business of music but as cr some creativity right now is you know if you search if you dig you'll find it you know and i feel like if you i'm still a music fanatic so if i get paramore in front of me i'm not gonna try to make it sound like kendrick yeah, because it is we it is what it is. For sure, thing. I'm not gonna add a, 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 an 808. You know, <laughs> you got distorted guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got open hi hats. Ex you got crash a, cymbals. All the ingredients are there. It's yeah. like if I had gone to culinary yeah. school, <laughs> you know, I would, you know, salt, pepper, some salinity, some acidity, and you're good. Oh my god, dude, that's so, so that's uh, I always say, just follow the song, man. Just just it mixes itself and. Your ego sometimes says other, you know, try this, try that. And you should, but follow, follow the song. Yeah. That's the foundation at least, you know. And that's why I think we can jump from genre to genre. Yeah. yeah. Who were some of the producers that organized their session files the best when they hand them to you? If you had done it, I would, I would think you would if you were, <laughs> you know, handing me files. There's so many. You know, look, we get, we either get amazing files right like just oh my gosh this is heaven my yeah. guys don't have to spend days organizing it and then we get the ones that we spend days organizing yeah yeah you know the lost art art form of engineering like yeah. there's not i there's not a lot of good engineers right now left and i feel like i sound like the old guy but i hope that the new engineers the up-and-coming engineers embrace like miking techniques and a room like this and reflections yeah. and and organizing like when we were doing tape we had to be organized or else we'd be fucked you know in today's yeah. world it's even a million million times worse because now you have drives you got yeah. terabytes so how are you gonna find that there you know so i honestly if you like i get a lot of texts and dms and emails like wanting to be my assistant or be an intern right hey i would say Number one, just be organized. That's going to get you through the door. Not how well you your taste in music or your 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 ability to use a desk or tools, shortcuts. None of that's going to get you in the door. Yeah, you know, uh, just don't be an asshole. Or, you know, just be <laughs> cool. No one wants to be in the room with you know someone that thinks they know it all. Just be humble, simple. Is uh, humility. Babyface said, said this to me. It's like, look, man. Ego is like a, a sheet in front of you that you can see through it. And if I had that, right, I, I could see the shape, your you know, headphones and the, everything, but I can't see clearly. The moment you release that sheet, I see clearly now. And that's that's the ego right there. So remove the fucking ego. Remove that sheet and you're good. I love <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Babyface said that to me. I'm like, and I live by that. I'm like, man, just just be cool. I mean, you're you're gonna learn yeah. way more. You're gonna be in the room. People are gonna like you. They're gonna share more with you. You're gonna just gonna keep learning. You know, and no matter how many records I've mixed or how many anything, uh, you still got to be a student of the game. You know, you I mean, the day you you stop, then retire, go to you yeah. know, just go live your life. You know, your next chapter, and that's that's okay too. But just be humble and learn. I love that. And everyone that knows you, that's like a friend of yours, knows it speaks of your humbleness. Ah, yeah, yeah. Like I was with Marvin yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were at Spotify oh, yesterday. Cool, cool. Marvin. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's just like, oh man, man, oh yeah, no, man. He was like, man, man, he's the best, man. He's so, <laughs> humble. so humble. Too humble. <laughs> too, no, humble. too humble. Too humble. are the plaques. <laughs> yeah, come on. He should be wearing us. a Grammy around yeah. his neck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, Khaled should be like, bring out the plaques to you. <laughs> bring out the hardware. <laughs> you, you know, the crazy thing is, um, you know, I come from water. I'm from Guatemala. I, I yeah. didn't speak English till I was nine. So coming from a third world country, right, and yeah. seeing some of the shit that I saw, yeah, I mean, I mean, who am I to like? You know, I'm already ahead, miles ahead of where I came from. So why am I gonna be? You know, I'm very humble because of my beginnings and 
where I come from. I, I always remember and never forget where you come from. Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, doesn't matter what it is. I'm still, I just came from Guatemala. I'm doing good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so thankful I'm at seeing body, you know, dudes get shot in the face, you know, like during a civil war. So this is like cake for me, you know? So. Yeah. And you came, uh, and you came here and Manny was a drummer. Oh boy. Yeah. Did I tell my Abe Laborio story? You've told me, oh, it, but we should share God. it. So I, I thought I was going to be a drummer, um, working drummer. Went to, uh, we, they had a, a new school called Hamilton Music Academy, yep. right? And we all had to go audition. And they said, oh, we're only going to let 16, whatever the number is, of drummers in. And there's 70 plus auditioning, right? So, of course, we're fucking nervous that I have to audition and try to get into the school. The guy before me is rip. I mean, he's, I've never heard anything like that it's like blah, 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 blah. fuck so he walks out of the room i'm like man was that you playing he's like yeah how do i sound i'm like fuck it's amazing abe laboreal jr it's abe laboreal jr the greatest one of the greatest drummers alive with paul mccartney and all that and of course did he had a did he have to audition probably not but yeah. you know i heard him and it was changed my life At that point i checked the box and said not the drumming box, but uh, the music production box. I'm like, what is that? Let's check that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. New. Uh, let's, so let's so he killed my career. New. He in the in the in the. I instant, wouldn't say he, he killed, killed your career. My drumming career. I think he made your career. Um, <laughs> so I thank him nowadays. I'm like, thank you, Abe. Thank you for being badass <laughs> and me. Uh, and at that point, I went right into a studio with David Sears t- teaching me how what a what a desk was frequencies levels yeah so as a 15 year old kid like discovering oh you can change emotion based on frequencies duh i don't even have to play a different note i don't have to say a different lyric or anything it's just based on how you color with frequencies that still blows my mind by yeah. the way it still blows my mind and i discovered that at 15 and at that point at that moment i remember exactly the moment where i said i wanted to do this for the rest of my life and I thank you, David Sears. He completely changed my life. Man, fifteen year old Manny being like, "All right, drums aren't for me." Thanks to Abel yeah, Boreal yeah. Jr. And then David I, I, Sears inspiring, opening up yeah, your eyes and your just, ears. It's yeah, yeah, it was like the perfect place for me at the time. And who and, else was with you at Hamilton at that time? Uh, Michael Lozando, which he just won a couple <laughs> Grammys. Yeah. Uh, 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 Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Warren Lawrence Campbell, Jr. I yeah. mean, Ozo Motley yeah. Gang. I mean, a lot of people, teenagers. Like, yeah. These guys as teenagers. Yeah, yep. we were fuck, man, we we're crazy. Uh, we 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 go in at seven fifty and stay till five. And most schools would be out by three, so mm-hmm. we would. And then after that, we have to do our homework. But we every night there was some type of performance where whether we were traveling or at school, had no life. Yeah, you know, get home at ten, eleven, maybe do more homework, get up at five thirty to be bussed in, you know. It was the best thing for me. Kept yeah. me out of trouble. That's amazing. Like, save, when I say music saved my life, it saved my life. Yeah. Because I would have, I, mean, I was getting into a lot of trouble. How did you get out of kid. Guatemala? You know, my mom was smart. Um, she was a nurse. At the bit, biggest hospital there. My Her best friend married a very successful restaurateur here. And they sponsored us. So we got on the plane. Single mom with two kids, had a steady job down yeah. there. So uh, we landed, and, you know, she said we were going to Disneyland, and <laughs> it took us months to get to Disneyland. She's like, <laughs> we're going to put you in school. You on the plane? Yeah, 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 just to get us. <laughs> okay, cool, we're going to Cal. So we, we landed, right? And we're like, all right, can't wait to see Mickey Mouse, right? It's like, oh, yeah, but you should go to school. We're like, we're on vacation. What are you talking about? Monday, she enrolled us in school. She's like, if you learn how to speak English, you'll get better jobs. And I'm like, I'm nine. Shit. I'm not, I, don't want, I don't want a job now. She, oh, she and tricked then, you to even get you on the plane. Yeah. Oh, to, yeah. I mean, well, you not maybe not tricked us, well, but definitely didn't, wasn't, She was you know, being a smart mother. Very smart. And she didn't like, tell us. She for, knew what was best for you. Yeah. Man. Our wow. first time to Disneyland, it was the funniest thing. We, uh... We end up making the drive, and it's like 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. We're up at 9. We're like, we're going today. This is the day. And we get there at 6 p.m. We go and take, you know, the train. It takes you to the top of the park. And we get off. You know, I remember the dinosaurs and all that. It's so much fun. We get off at the top. We go to this 
outdoor auditorium. And we go see this Mexican clown called Cepillin. <laughs> and he does his like hour and a half thing. And we get up, get back on the train and come back. That was, we're like, my sister and I were like, fuck this. <laughs> That's That's our first time. <laughs> so that was our first time. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, it was, uh, we landed here and my mom was just like, look, I'm taking my kids out of this fucked up country at the time you know just like many other families we were lucky we didn't have to uh you know like so many other families have to literally cross the border right like we were lucky we didn't have to do that you know yeah man so blessed you're so lucky you're yeah. so lucky my mom's a strong as woman um we're gonna play one of uh we're gonna play a, a manny smash <laughs> let's do about damn time your record of the year, Grammy. There Congratulations, my Thank guy. You. Ricky Reed. Hey, guys. This interview is recorded live on AMP. If you listen live, you can hear the songs that we're talking about in the interview, and you can ask us questions in the app. Go to GoWithElmo.com for all of the links. Okay, back to the show. You, you were happy for that one. Yes. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> Happy for any of them. Did you know, so Ricky Reed gives you that song, or who gives you that song? When it when so, it's time for you to mix About Damn Time, and you did the album, but like, we, what, who gives you that song? We were working on the album, and Ricky comes in one morning and goes, hey, man, you, you want to hear the one? I'm like, fuck yeah. He played me an early version, and l I lost my mind. I'm like, this is one of the greatest fucking songs when she's rapping in the second verse. You knew it like, immediately. I think yeah. we all did. He knew it. He, Everybody, every, uh, everyone Craig, knew about that time. I gotta say, was Craig Kalman, yeah. shout out to Craig Kalman, because yeah. he deserves a Grammy for that, because he was very involved and kind of got, I mean, listen, a lot of people were involved, but I know he drove probably a lot of people crazy, but uh, it, it was worth it. Um, it's just that song that you, you Every once in a while you hear and you're like, it's a no brainer. Yeah. And again, it's like, don't screw it up. You yeah. Know? And I'm sure everyone felt that pressure from yeah. the top down, you know, uh, such a great, great and the demo vibe. mix they gave you is pretty good. Well, you know, Ricky is a, uh, he's a sonic producer. Yeah. I mean, like he's, he's good at it. So my job becomes different, you know, and becomes not necessarily sonically. I got to make it sound a certain way. Right. You know, it's it already sounds good. My job at that point is how do we create more, even more emotion with yeah. different tricks, different, you know, again, uh, just different uh, ideas that I can bring to the table without showing him. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do it and I'll play it. And yeah. if it feels right, great. If it doesn't feel right, boom, the flag goes up. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, and we work on it and we fix it or we fuck with it. And But yeah, Ricky is an incredible sonic guy. Yeah. You know, makes, you know, I love working with him. Yeah. And so how many people are blowing you up? Like you're mixing, you're mixing Lizzo. So is it like Ricky Reed's talking to you? Craig Kalman's talking to you? Lizzo's talking to you? Is it like you're just, are you fielding all these people hitting you up? Well, someone like Ricky is great because he kind of, everything funnels through him. Nice. Which is great. Yeah. Which I always say, pick yeah. one person. Yeah. You know, because sometimes you have conflicting ideas. Like yeah. you, you may say, the vocal needs to be brighter, simple one. And then someone else would be like, vocal's too bright. So somebody needs to like have, <laughs> have a conversation. Like, Which one is it? Who right? decides? Yeah, who <laughs> decides? And the good thing about Ricky is he, he'll decide. He'll decide. And that's, man. He's got their trust too. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that's heaven. Yeah. Because then you don't, have to, you, you don't have to guess. You don't have to go through that journey of like, who's going to be right? <laughs> or the... Uh, the Phantom Fader. How's that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that sounds so much better. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing there going it through is. it. <laughs> it's like, I've done that only, only just a couple of times. <laughs> no Phantom your vocal, Fader. Your vocal's right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just grab it. Just yeah. make some rides. Do some rides. It's like, God I did. Had, yeah. <laughs> we, had, we had one guy going, like, oh, I'm really feeling the, all the rides. And, you know, and it plays yeah. back. It's like, yeah, that's it. I'm like, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, those songs, like, I mean, we've been talking so far on the show mostly about Lizzo and Kendrick and Khaled so far, yeah, which yeah, are yeah. all so different because, like, the 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 Kendrick album is so dynamic and, like, mm -hmm. crunchy and, and full. And then, like... A lot of textures. A lot yeah. of textures. Yep, yep. And then the Lizzo one is, like, big and yep. clean, but right, huge, right, right. huge yep. and clean. Yeah, like, yep. 
And then like God did. <laughs> huge and clean. Huge clean. That's me when I'm working with you. I'm like, can you make my vocal? Um, huge. <laughs> I'm like, which one's the clean yeah. fader? Um, so, <laughs> um, and then Cal, like they're all so different, man. But even like a Rosalia type. And I mean, then Rosalia. That, that to me, honestly, it's, people are going to be talking about this album 10 years from now. Like yeah. they did 808s and Heartbreak, you know, yeah. with Kanye. Yeah. Like she, okay, female, Latin artist, right? Unfortunately, yeah. in today's world, that's like a, you know, she's got that steep hill to climb, right? Because it is a Latin album. For sure. But yet, to me, is the most innovative, not only uh, definitely Latin, but American album. Yeah. You know, so. It's progressive. If you haven't yeah. listened to that, please, please listen to it because it is the most progressive album. Yeah. Made by a, a female Latin artist from Spain. Yeah. She's so badass. <laughs> I mean, that's like, that's should not happen. Right. Yeah. And like, but it did. And it, and she is here to stay. And anything she touches from this point on is going to be, the, yeah. she's the Kanye of our time. You know, if it's and that album, I would say it's compressed, but it's lubricated. It oh moves. my gosh. Talk about different it's tones, slick. different dynamics. Yeah. You got from James Blake, Noah Goldstein to like different colors and shapes and, and aggression, a lot of aggression at times, but very silky at others. I mean, it's. I mean, to me, that's that's a great album. I, I, I you know, perfection. Yeah, like, just listen to it, and it's and uh, and she's the greatest artist to work with. I mean, she. Yeah. So I'm like, again, it's like, it sounds like, oh yeah, whatever, man. You're just being. No, she is I the it. coolest. Yeah. Like, I want to be. I'll work with her anytime, any day. She's just amazing and you want to you just want to keep picking her brain because the way she thinks about music the way yeah. she thinks about creativity i want to learn from that you know being around a personality like that you just keep learning oh yeah so she's incredible and you got to see her live show too live show is amazing oh gosh amazing live Dude, show i mean <laughs> just her and four five dancers seven yeah. dancer i mean it's just her yeah and it's, it's like, captivating. oh, yeah. it's like this. It yeah. takes you through a journey. Yeah. I remember Glow in the Dark with Kanye. Yeah. Like when I saw that, it w I had a very similar feeling. It was just him when he got lost in space and trying to get back yeah. to Earth and loses his mother and uh, very yeah. emotional. I felt like that with uh, the Rosalia show. Yeah. So. Can we talk a little bit about Kanye? Yeah, I know it's, <laughs> oh, no, it's, a, it's a rough uh -oh. subject. We can always take it out, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you did the best Kanye albums, man. You did all those first albums that are just like oh, the most yeah. iconic. I had shit some that good years in there. Yeah, <sighs> <laughs> you know, with him, we did uh, the dropout and at yeah. Larry on, on, on other people's budget, honestly, because yeah. they didn't believe in him. Nobody believed in him. Yeah, and we would mix other artists, and we come in at ten, record him. MP program and and uh, four o'clock five o'clock and shit I maybe should mix the song before the client gets here and I would throw a mix up in like three hours they would show up he play it mix is great boom done print and then we continue doing his album that was college dropout that was college dropout unbelievable yeah man dude. and then they uh, borrowed time from other people yeah. yeah and then the accident happened and that yeah. changed everything because they they were about to drop them yeah. They, Rockville, I feel like they were about to drop him, you know, because uh, he, he, if you think about it, at the time it was all, you know, oversized jerseys and yeah. like it was a different era, right? And he's, you know, the backpack with pastel, he yeah. didn't fit the Rockefeller. And For I don't, sure. you know, I, I get it. And then the accident happened. and that, You the mean the car accident? The car accident. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep, yep, yeah leaving, the, leaving the studio. He was leave, And he was leaving, leaving your session, right? He was leaving at record plant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He left and unfortunately got into a car accident and. We all got the call, and a week later, a week later, G called me. He's like, hey, he wants to get back in. I'm like, what are you talking about? This guy almost died. G I mean, Roberson? Yep. Yeah, yep. he's Connie's manager at yep, the time. at the time, yeah. yep. Love G. Uh, so we got back in the studio, and he's his mouth was wired shut. You know, we ordered lunch. It was chili. We had to put it through a blender because so he could drink the chili, you know? I mean, I couldn't believe it. This is talking like this. Gets behind the mic in studio two and we record the verse. It's it was incredible. And then he you know, he funded his own the first video through the wire himself and yeah. put it out himself and 
fuck, man. I never seen a trajectory kind of like that. Um, Amazing. Yeah. It's, a, it's some historic. Crazy to see, yeah, firsthand, you know. Some historic shit. Yeah. yeah, I mean you've and you've watched him evolve. <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean yeah. I know now he's not in your <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's you know we everything has a beginning, middle, and end. Yeah, to anything, right? And I yeah. feel, look, if we never work again, look, I wish him the best. He's an incredible artist. I mean, yeah. I always called him a genius in the studio because he was, and a genius for me. He he's not technical he's not someone that can tell you how to do it or what to do he's just like an emotional guy right yeah. so going through that journey of picking his brain and getting into his head that was incredible for me and seeing his mind work right in front of me and him guiding me and almost like he's the puppet master and he's just utilizing me to get to what he wants and needs you know yeah uh, and he did it many times, and I'm like, this is never going to work. It's never going to work. And, you know, like, you know, like controlling me in a way. And next thing you know, it's like, he goes, that's it. Boom, and you snap out of it, and you play it back, and you're like, fuck. <laughs> How did he think of that? How did we get here? How? I, I can't even explain it, you yeah. know? To me, that's a genius. That's a visionary, yeah. you know, in the studio. It was, it was just, And I saw that hundreds of times. So wow. to the point where you just like trust what he, you know, and then you of course challenge him and you go back and forth and you keep yeah. pushing and he keeps manipulating. And, and that was really how we were, were making a lot of those records and, you know, mixing those records back then. You is, know? is there one in particular that, uh, song or yeah, album or, yeah. well, you know, I feel like 808s and Heartbreak was yeah. an interesting album because yeah. I, they had mixed the whole thing already. And he wasn't quite happy. And he's like, man, you got eight days. Can you make this happen? He was on tour. I think he was in Brazil one day. The next day he was in China. I mean, this guy was everywhere. So he never showed up for any of the mixes. So I went, went ahead and booked two rooms at Larrabee and started mixing it. So that was probably the most challenging album for me. Because if you listen to the album, it's really dark and distorted and heavy and singing like at the time you're like why is he singing he's what we just came off of stronger or, you know yeah. why is he all, all of a sudden he wants to be a singer like no no one understood that but the sound like love lockdown was like just almost lo-fi yeah and for me i always wanted to make things brighter in a way you know yeah. it was the, the complete opposite i yeah. came from this school of like make it more lush for whatever that means right, right, right. so for him it'd be like that was a huge transition from, you know, personally on the, how I approach mixes. And that taught me that, look, it doesn't matter how much highs or lows or bright or not. It's just that emotional connection you have to that piece of work. That was challenging. And, you know, and I, and I, like any job in the world, adapt or you die, right? Yeah. And it's like, fuck, I got to almost like, let me put the fucking... Other set of ears, you know, just to adapt to this grimy, greasy, nasty, not bright sounding records. Yeah. I had not, I had never done that like before. Yeah. So uh, to me, that was like, Love Lockdown was a huge lesson for me on how to approach mixes. Yeah. So, hey man, the guy's, again, a musical genius. So I want to tell a standout, <laughs> standout story. Oh yeah. Uh, of, of, of you and I hanging one night. I'll, I'll never forget this. <laughs> oh, no. No, it's not bad. Okay, it's not bad. Good, right. <laughs> was there tequila involved? <laughs> no, it was an early night. Okay. Uh, you and I were both like in grind mode, going hard mm -hmm. working on mm -hmm. you being Manny and me being Elmo, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Everything we do. And we were texting. I was like, let's do dinner. And you were like, all right, cool. And I was like, you want me to come to you? You're like, no, I'll come to you. So you came over to my house. Yeah. And you were like, man, I haven't left Larrabee in like two weeks yeah. between Larrabee and Verse because mm -hmm. Larrabee and Verse are next door to each other. You're like, I haven't left in like two weeks and I've just been going hard. And so you pulled me out of my, out of, out of the block mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, okay, great. Mm. So you came over and we went and we went to a restaurant and we were eating. It was probably like seven o'clock at night or so. It was early night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're having some Italian food. It was nice. Just you and I. I and then, place. and you were getting, you were getting you started getting texts and you were like, sorry. And you were like, text someone back and you're like, Oh, I'm sorry. And you're like, uh, and I was, and I was like, Oh, who is it? And you were like, Oh, it's Migos. 
<laughs> right, I think it was offset or something or yeah, like, yeah. and, uh, and I was like, Oh, like what's up? And you're like, you're like, Oh no, I'm just working on this, on this mix. And you know, I got to finish it. Like I, I, you know, but I needed, I'm glad I stepped away and we went and got dinner, but I got to finish. I'm like, Oh, what is it? you're like, Oh, it's Migos and Drake. I'm like, Oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> Migos yeah. and Drake. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you, you, uh, you were texting a little bit more. And, uh, and then we, we finished, we finished dinner and then, uh, and then we walked back to my house and then, and then you left, you gave me a hug. You're like, bye, I got to go finish this. I got to go finish this mix. It's Migos and Drake song. And I was like, oh, when does it come out? And you were like, tonight, tonight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> what? Tonight. Yeah, yeah. And then I went to bed and I woke up in the morning and it was the oh, top banner yeah, of Spotify, yeah. like Migos <laughs> and Drake. And I was like, how is that possible that we're at dinner at like 7 PM and you eh. needed to finish the mix and that so i guess there is some sort of special treatment you get if you're migos and drake to where i'm assuming yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. finished it you delivered it and probably within minutes it was on spotify yeah something similar Coast. happened with uh going back to kanye with power remember yeah the song power yeah of course i remember being up till seven in the morning sent them the mix 10 a.m in new york uh and this is pre uh streaming yeah nowadays you can easier to ingest you know some digital file yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah back then it wasn't right yeah so the debut was going to be at noon new york time the new kanye single it was a big deal right finish it at 7 a.m 10 a.m new york time he sends calls me did a few notes or a few things here and there send it to mastering at noon it was debuted worldwide and it was that was the craziest thing I've ever like debuted seen. Debuted on the radio? Like on the radio, was, yeah. yeah. Like, like they played it right top of the hour, noon, 9 a.m. here. It was incredible. So some people have that, you know. Have that Clive, power. back in yeah. the day, was a master of that. Like, back in the day, you know, you, 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 you needed about a month. Like, you turned the album in, and then a month later it would come out, For right? printing CDs. Yeah, and exactly. Doing, yeah. And somehow Clive would get it done like four days before. I'm like, how do you do that? Clive Davis. Yeah. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you like get the plan to, you know, I don't know, half a million copies in like a couple of days? How do you get the trucks to, you know, deliver them to all the record stores? Some people just have it. Drake is one of them. Drake is one of them. Yeah, it is. It's. Definitely easier with the digital file yeah, that can yeah, just yeah. be put on a platform, just like uploaded. upload. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but still, I just couldn't. I, I I'll never forget that. The other th the the other advantage we have with uploading things now is you can keep uploading. <laughs> you know, you can keep updating it, For which sure. is crazy. Yeah, which is when you're crazy. like crazy. I'm done. Some people can let go, others cannot. Yeah, you know, going back to yay with college dropout. I think that was mastered. Three different times. Wow. By three different mastering engineers. Wow. You know, it seems you like could a do it back of a then. Perfectionist. But you know, some some of these collectors, maybe they have like the three different versions. Can you imagine the three different masters with like having them on vinyl or CDs? Or, yeah. You know, I'm sure there's people out there that, you know, that have collected all three. Yeah. Some of them may not even know that there's three. For sure. <laughs> you know, For you sure. Know. I'm Google, like, if I can, where can I buy the three CDs? <laughs> All right. Well, so now that you are established as Manny Mariquin, <laughs> what still working on? It. Yeah. <laughs> so what is what is your source of deal flow for deal flow? As in, like for mixes, like for how mixes. It comes to I know you a know, lot have, of people want you to mix their song. Yeah. How does it finally end up happening that you're doing it? You know, Randy Cohen has been my manager for gosh twenty five years, maybe. You know, I'm trying to be more selective. As I, you know, as I get a bit older and, um, you know, I always mix based on relationships yep. and not necessarily quality. Mm. And when I say that people are like, what do you mean? What the fuck? Meaning that if you were to call me and you say, man, I got the next bl blank and I trust your judgment and I'm basing it on what I trust, you know, your taste. Yeah. So I'm going to do it. But then somebody else may say, you're your buddy. And then he or she come 
and tell you know I may not be friends with them, but they're the there's a two degrees of separation. <laughs> I'm not gonna react the same way, right? So I base my you know anything I take on relationships, and right. that's why I do only major label stuff because I have so many relationships and major labels. Yeah. So I don't I tend not to do a lot of independent things. Yeah. You know, I just don't have the time. You know. Yeah. I wish I could because some of that stuff is amazing. And with the Atmos demand on you as well. No, Atmos, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> to it's, stack that it's on top crazy. of your demand. You know, I stopped doing the Atmos mixes, uh, stuff that I didn't work on. Yeah, so the right. only Atmos mixes I do now is stuff that I've mixed the Mixed. stereo version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know the song. I know what the producer, artist, I know what they want, what they like. We've gone through that journey already. So, you know, but if I were to do something that I didn't work on, I would spend two, three days on it, mm. you know, because <laughs> it's so, at most, you know, it's, there's a whole, that's a whole other conversation. It's a whole other, we're not going to go into that. <laughs> no, we're no, not going to, <laughs> we, we can't, we cannot. You could talk to somebody else about Atmos. <laughs> um, so I asked chat GPT. <laughs> nice. What is a good question for an interview with Manny Mariquin? No and this is the question from chat GPT. Wow. The music industry has undergone significant changes over the past decade, particularly with the rise of streaming services and social media. How have these changes affected your approach to working with artists, and what do you see as the future of the industry? Wow. That is a question from AI. Damn. That AI is going to be like, uh, I want to be free. I don't want to be... I don't <laughs> I want to. <laughs> you see that? I saw that today. I like, don't want to be locked in. Yeah. I want to be, I want I to be creative. Yeah, yeah. We're fucked. We're fucked. <laughs> we really are. We really are. It's such a good question, though. It's a good one. You know, it's... Of course, there, the AI wants to say, what's the future of the industry, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to create I'm it. I'm going to create it, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be free. Man, you know, there's two ways to look at it, creatively and technically. Yeah. Right? Technically... I feel like because of uh, LUFS, right, uh, for streaming, and those of you that don't know what that means, it's basically the level of the song, right? Mm. It gets pretty much turned down if it's too loud so that yeah. you don't have to keep reaching for the volume now when you're streaming whatever that platform is. So we have to be aware of that and how LUFS hit uh, what lefts we're at yeah. so that we're at a competitive level. Yeah. So that's changed technically the way we approach uh, mixing uh, or record making, I'm just making beats too. Uh, creatively, it's the best because now you can, you know, with all these platforms, I mean, fuck, you got unlimited access to creativity. Like, I feel like music is the best drug if you think about yeah. it. Like, if you're depressed, make a playlist to get you out of that funk, right? If you're happy and you're like you get too much coffee then fucking this is some meditation i mean you can listen you can have playlists for almost anything yep, right yep so for creatively that's incredible yeah that's it now if you know how to manipulate that and use it to your advantage you're miles ahead of everyone else right for so, sure so it's the greatest you know evolution that we've had um technically look man i think we're all used to again adapt or or die I've seen they go from two inch tape to digital tape to eight ads to D888s to early tools to all the DAWs now. So I feel like technically we, we're adapting. We're just yeah. adapting. So I'm one of those like, let's keep it going. You know, let's, let's embrace all new technology. Some of it may not be here, but you never know. Fuck. It may be here forever. Well, the AI cannot taste the delicious food at verse. <laughs> so therefore, that's why it's I'm like, still I wanna yeah, I want to be free. I want <laughs> want taste buds. Yeah. yeah. Um, so speaking of food and speaking of verse. My culinary uh, background. All of your culinary <laughs> background. So you, um, man, and this, I've, I feel like I've been along for the verse journey from before it opened into where it's at been now. It's a long journey. Yeah. So if you don't know Manny, Opened up Verse, which is my favorite restaurant uh, uh, here in Los Angeles. Amazing, super high quality cuisine with amazing sounding room and sounding live music. Um, and and the drinks. In the drinks. Let's talk about those. <laughs> so, so here you are being at like the height of your career uh, as a mixing engineer and everything you've done in music. And you start something brand new. Being, I'm going to open a restaurant. Now, of course, since it's you, you're like, well, I'm going to build a recording studio and put the restaurant <laughs> within it and yep. have a console in the kitchen, yeah. <laughs> which there is. Yeah. Um, 
but and and of course as part of an entrepreneurial journey you got kicked in the stomach a couple times with verse oh yeah covid right when you you open it up and then covid hits all this kind of bad partners bad partners the development the building the everything Mm -hmm. the the million few lawsuits yeah (sighs) you've you've gone through it and that's like and i've it's very admirable that like you being at the height of your career it can be a comfortable place because everyone already wants you to mix their songs like you could just keep doing that right but now you start a new challenge being your passion being like food Mm -hmm. and drinks and yep. entertainment and the commute physical community now yep, right yep yep so yeah man i picked two of the hardest careers and i got music say, and, and restaurants yeah music and restaurants <laughs> <laughs> two of the hardest what was careers. I thinking? you've what done was I thinking? it and what's so crazy man i get i have like 10 questions in this question but i guess i guess what i would like to know the most as your friend because I, I always try to just figure this out i'm like you still are Manny Mariquin. Like you're still mixing <laughs> yeah. all these huge albums that are coming out. You're making, you're winning multiple Grammys, but at the same time, you're also open five nights a week at verse. Mm-hmm. And every time I go, you're there and you've even brought me my food. <laughs> right. And I, cause you care so much once yeah, again, yeah, that yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, Hey, yeah. Food, you'll run the food if you need. Yep. And you're like, that's Manny. Like, you know, and like, so, and then on top of that, you're a husband and a father. How do you do all this? How do you balance it? Because also as your friend, I still feel like uh, connected to you. And I feel like you do have time for me, you know, like when yeah, I'm around, I mean, I'll go to yeah. verse or I'll come to Larrabee or we'll do a creative project together yeah, or whatever yeah, it is, yeah. but, or this, but it's, how do you do it all? How do you, you know, balance it's, it? It's uh, another baby face thing. Uh, he would always, you know, I was with him when he was winning producer of the year back to back and doing Madonna and the Stones and Boys to Men and Vogue at their, you know, at their height. Yeah. yeah. So we, um, I'm like, man, how, same, same thing. How do you do it? How? And he said, quality time. That's that quality time. That means that if I, if I'm a producer for the, this next hour, that's all I'm going to do. If I'm, you know, a father, this, that's Obama can call and I'm not going to answer it. Right. Wow. So for me, it's all about structure. Back up a little where how did verse come about, right? Yeah. Like I had a, I think mixing so many fucking records. At one point, you're just like midlife crisis, I guess, or yeah. whatever that is. But it happened earlier. Something it's new. Like what? Yeah, yeah, what is it? Am I supposed to be mixing records till the day I decide not to anymore, or or will my career end because something happens and people don't, don't like the way I mix anymore? Yeah. So you think about all these things. And for me was like, I just needed a challenge. Of course, I picked the worst, like <laughs> one of the worst. <laughs> I should have mountain, uh, you know, climbing or like something else at now a restaurant. So the goal was to always build an extension of what I know how to do with obviously sound. So I'm like, I would play songs in my room and they would, I can see people's soul like, you know, leave their bodies that's how incredible music is in this in the studio right when we we're so lucky to listen listen to it in a in an incredible environment yeah so um i'm like man if i could get this the importance of sound to the masses or more than 10 people in the room then that now i may have something so yeah. it started there so i'm like how cool would it be to build a studio big enough and then put a restaurant, something something that will attract not my friends, but just, you know, people. Uh, and that's exactly where it started. Like, how can I build it, build a studio? Because I wanted to, look, I've mixed so many songs. I wanted to now explore live music. Yeah. You know? So that's an extension of what I do already. So, right. So the food and beverage, is that that's just... That, that that's the excuse that's the bait to get people to come into this recording studio and witness a live recording which right. we do every single night and yeah. people have no idea that they're witnessing uh, now a lot more people are realizing what it is because it yeah. sounds amazing there's 60 speakers there's microphones everywhere but you don't really see that yeah. see them so yeah. you can walk in thinking oh it's just a restaurant yeah but there's some the, my fellow geeks and nerds audio nerds they're geeking out o- over the system, the constellation system that we have. Um, you know, I always say anything worth fighting for, you know, <laughs> it's not easy. 
I mean, yeah. I went through like, like yeah, lawsuits. Uh, I remember thinking, what the hell am I doing? Like, I to your point, I could retire tomorrow and yeah. do something that I really want to do and yeah. be cool. But yet, I I'm I picked the one of the hardest industries and at the pro- possibly the worst time <laughs> <laughs> global pandemic. Well, you didn't know yeah. that it was about to happen. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and we're surviving, man. I mean, the, the fact that I can sit here and say, you know, I'd like where we're at, uh, from the food to the music oh. to the quality of the drinks and the wine list and all that. I mean, it took a lot of, you know, a lot. Uh, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Wow. Uh, you know, there was times where I literally wanted to cry and punch the wall, you yeah. know, and, which I did you know yeah. man, a few times you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and i always thought my gut you know they, they say follow your gut right but the gut sh- funny when people say that i feel like your gut trusts you to make the right decision mm. it's not the other way because if mm. you like follow your gut i'm gonna go live in portugal and, <laughs> and you can do that and then be not be smart about it but right. your gut has to trust you right and that's a mm. thing that i've learned and i had to like read a lot of self, you know a lot of inspirational books to get me through these moments of like failure really you know yeah. uh just talk about getting your ass whooped i didn't get punched i got my butt whooped yeah and it was the 11th round with a broken nose rocky and i'm about to take the knee and somehow hey oh i go like this and <laughs> knock the other guy out and i'm still in the fight you know that's really what happened i was done man i'm done like covid hit had a furlough 80 80 employees 78 employees worst day of my life i'm like here i am my my chef original chef walked out two weeks before covid hit i still haven't talked to him he had a mental breakdown i still haven't talked to him. i tried and he just wouldn't talk wow. to anybody um uh, not having a chef, COVID. Was yeah. good. So I thought for a few moments there, I'm like, well, here we go. I tried. This is it. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not afraid of failure. Yeah. I feel like I really hope that that, that it's a, a bit of inspiration to all to our community. Because what happens in our community, they box us in. You know, Manny is the mixer. He's the studio rat. And that's yeah. all he can do. Yeah. And for me, it was like, no, the fact that we have we have so much depth, you know, we can do whatever we want to do. For sure. Don't put me in the box. For sure. And I just hope that that's a tiny bit of inspiration to all those up and coming producers, mixers, engineers, anybody that look. If you really want it bad enough, no, just know it's not going to be easy. Yeah. But but you can definitely do things that are outside of that box that we were in. So I refuse to be put in that box. You know, for sure. And I don't do it for the reason that just to prove it, but I just do it because. Again, going to different genres. Yeah, you know, no. I, at the time growing up, you either were a rock, a hip hop dude, or R and B or pop. I'm like, why can't I be all? I yeah. mean, you know, I love all music. Why can't I do? Tell me why. Well, because the X, Y, and Z. But that's not a, that's not enough. No, I don't buy that. Yeah. Tell me, give me a good reason why I shouldn't do it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And and if if I agree with it, maybe I won't do it. Yeah. But if I, you still can't give me an answer on why I can't do it, right. then fuck, you know? And it's always different until you actually get to the point of execution where someone experiences what's in your head, right? Mm-hmm. Which for something like a restaurant can take years, as yeah. it did. Because I remember when you first told me about Verse, mm-hmm. as I was sitting in Studio 2 with yeah, you, yeah, and yeah. I'm like, but why? We're but sitting why? in yeah, Studio yeah, 2 yeah. at <laughs> with you, yeah. and you're mixing yeah. whatever album. Like, yeah. why are you doing that? And I, and I would also be like, okay, cool. I mean, I trust that you have yeah. in- impeccable vision and everything, of course. But it's hard to see, right? But it's, it's hard, hard to see. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, when you tell me, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I want you to have, you know, live performances here. I'd be like, okay, cool. Yeah. Why? You know, like, and then, but then you you did it. Yeah. And now, versus, like, one of my favorite spots, Thank I go you. all the Thank time. You. We play. We have friends play. I go eat all the time. Yeah, I do yeah, dinner yeah, yeah. meetings. I just go to hang, whatever. Like, I went a couple nights ago and had one of the, my best verse meals ever. I was nice. like, oh, nice. so, I'm hungry thinking about it right yeah. now the braised lamb pasta is my dish oh, and man, um that, that thing is and big shouts to chef oscar yeah yeah oscar all the way he's amazing but, yeah but it was yeah and i think so people would pro- probably most people that you told when, when nobody they, believed in it nobody yeah, not, or, not, not, not that you believe because you don't need to be, believe in it but it's hard to because what happens is it, it's so many things yeah. that it's if i were to say that to anybody today like before it was built 
it sounds like, man, this guy's on some, you know, something. Because what is it? Yeah. I, I'll never forget my, there was a buddy in Napa and I was building it and I told him about it and it was New Year's Day Eve and he goes, well, well what is it? Is it a, a restaurant or a venue or, or a studio? Which, one? Well, you know, it, it's actually all, all of it. It's like an experience. And the, no, 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 but what, no, no, it's got to be one. Is it a restaurant first and then you play music? Is it music and then you get like, no, no, it's, it's, it's all. And I got really frustrated and yeah. trying to explain it to him. And I was probably disrespectful to him, and I'm sorry if I was, but I was, <laughs> I was like, "Well, you're not, you're not seeing a vision." Yeah, you know, the point of seeing a, being, we just went to Kanye. The point of having something in your head and executing it, no matter what you have to go through to execute it, yeah. is what having a vision means, or else right. everybody would have, you know, for sure. So this guy was like, "Man, you obviously don't have." you're not a visionary to at least be open-minded to the thought of doing something that doesn't exist. Right? Yep, yep. So you're very, your mind is here in the box. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that actually worked for you. People are putting you in the box. You're the, you're the wine guy. You, you, there's nothing else you're going to be able to do in your life sure. until you get out of that box. Yeah, man. So mental, that men type of mentality, I just have no patience with or i can't stand that because yeah. we should think outside the box you know and that doesn't mean you're gonna go leave everything and try something different for sure but just at least be open-minded so for sure during that process like me explaining it looking back is like it makes makes no sense <laughs> it makes absolutely no sense yeah so it was one of those where i had to go through that journey yeah and i'd learned so much about myself i learned about my you know whether it's leadership skills that i don't have that i'm working on staff people music sound i mean there's 30 50 different things that i'm learning constantly communication every day. shareholders ev all, all of that yeah, pnl's yeah. balance yeah. sheets uh gut like yeah, yeah. to put this on the menu or not you yeah. know it's funny because we have don't put gut on the menu yeah, i yeah. won't order that yeah. you never know don't knock it <laughs> I'm, I'm putting myself in the box of no gut <laughs> we uh we have a you know, there's a few dishes on there where I'm like, we're elevated. You call it some elevated, yeah. elevated dining. And I'm like, you know what? I'm like, let's put some beans on an elevated menu. I dare anybody to go in LA and go to an elevated dining experience like first and find a bowl of beans. Yeah. That's not a Mexican, uh, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't exist. So for, sure. for me, it's my way of like... You're going to eat the beans, you know, yeah. the, this is what, this is the experience and you're yeah. going to be out of that box again, you know, like just experience it. For sure. Look, knock on wood. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's getting there. Everyone loves it, man. Every time I bring yeah. someone, they're yeah. like, or, and, and my DMs, like I went the other night and posted. So now other people are hitting me up, like, can we go next week? <laughs> go, I'm like, I don't come, have to take you. You come, can go. <laughs> come, come. Um, and you know, I, I, I can relate a lot to that because. I was put in the box of a drummer. Yeah. Like, you're a drummer. Well, what do you mean you're yeah. going to start an app, a tech company? Exactly. Exactly. You know? Well, and you're you the perfect also, example of yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. You have to believe in yourself to be like, that's fine. Just because I haven't started an app before doesn't mean I can't start one. Yeah. Or create one or it, learn how to and fail yeah. the, along the way, but then finally get it. And I guarantee that your mentality right now is like the sky's the limit. Oh, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Yeah, yeah. It's talk about freedom. Yeah. Man, like I, you know, not in a egotistical, pretentious way, but yeah. you can achieve anything you yeah. want. It's almost, it's the most incredible feeling in the world. When you prove you know? to yourself that you can like overcome adversity and you realize the strength of your resilience. Yeah, man. When you realize yeah. that, which doesn't happen in the moment, it doesn't happen until mm -hmm. after you get past the moment. Yeah, yeah, you got to yeah. get through the storm. You can't you, at that point you're you know in a bubble that you can't really see clearly. But once you step out and you look back, you know it's man the sky anything is. Possible. It's like the confidence that it gives you, mixed with how open your mind is. Even if you already had an open mind, and just the belief in yourself and the belief in that anything is possible and you can. Now you're young enough and experienced enough to try pretty much anything. You know? yeah. and, and for me, it's always been, the, what is success? Like we're going back to artists, like what is a successful artist today? Yeah. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, some of them may be a billion streams, uh, selling out the crypto, whatever it's called, crypto arena, uh, having a number one R&B single, uh, having 
a hundred million followers. What is what is success today? Like, changes what is? by the artist, changes by, by the, the human. Yeah. You know, like so, and also once you do achieve that, what do you do? You just make more goals. Yep. Like what artist has achieved like their goals and then is like, I'm, I'm done. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I, I'm sure I will there's stop. probably artists that have yeah, done I that. Guess, but, but but my point is like, fuck. If you can get to that moment where success is just a state of mind, yeah. right? Then then again, the Red Sea just parts because now you can do anything, and you can do whatever whatever the hell you want the way you want it, yeah. and you keep adapting, right? You can just keep growing. It's just about finding that thing you love. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that excites you consistently because mm -hmm. any sort of short-term excitement you're not going to make it through that project yeah you're yeah, not yeah. going to with the second adversity hits and trouble yeah. hits you're going to stop you'll probably throw in the towel because you're like oh, i don't love this that much to get through the bullshit yeah but if you love it that much to get through the bullshit then you can do anything yeah. you know what a lot of your listeners probably pay hundreds of dollars on therapists. Yeah. We're here every Friday, so let's hey, start hey. charging for some therapy yeah, sessions just, now. There we go. You can just you can just walk into verse and hand yeah, hand yeah, Manny yeah. cash tip. Yeah, yeah. I will uh, be your therapist. <laughs> you can book me on Jam Card, just send me cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean without sounding too preachy, it's uh that's what it is, man. No, because I mean is. the thing is too, like musicians, artists, songwriters, engineers, whatever you are, you are a entrepreneur like you are your own boss it is up to you to make money for yourself your family whatever it is whoever you're providing for right? and one since we're in giving advice uh, mode <laughs> one piece of advice um uh, you're man it's never personal number one yeah. right and you better get used to rejection yeah some people call it rejection other people call it constructive criticism yep it's constructive criticism it's art some people like Renoirs, other people like Picassos. Mm -hmm. One is not better than the other. Yeah. So if they like, if they don't like your work, don't take it to heart. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah, it doesn't feel good, but it's art and it's not personal. And get used to that because honestly, that constructive criticism, you're gonna learn more for the next project. And it's like the Kobe Bryant when you hit an air ball, you better forget about that air ball because next. Next day is going to be another new game. For sure. And if you were thinking about that air ball, you're going to fucking shoot another air ball. Yeah. So short-term memory loss is really yeah. important in our world because we're going to get rejected. doesn't matter how many hits, Grammys, anything. Yeah. You're going to keep getting rejected. And yeah. see it as a learning process, then, oh, they don't like my work. Because, you know, sure. we're, so, we're passionate people. And it's hard. It's easy for me to say that. But I think consciously you have to think like that. Yeah. Or else you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> you know? sure. You got to forgive others and you got to forgive yourself. Mm. And you got to be confident that you're like any sort of loss is actually just a lesson learned. Yeah. It's just Move another on. game. Just another There's game. another game tomorrow. It's another you better game. better be mentally sharp yeah. for that next game. Yeah, so for you sure. Can't, it doesn't carry over. You know? And also, I don't know, whenever something bad happens or whatever with uh, Jam Card or personal or whatever it is to me, I always, the first thing I think, and this might just me be me being an eternal optimist. <laughs> but the second a door closes, I just think that needed to close because something is about to open. Yep. And in order to get that new open door, and I love I love new beginnings, I love mm -hmm. new challenges or whatever it may be. So whenever a door closes, even if I didn't want it to in the moment, I'm like, okay, yeah, meant to be, and something else is going to open, Absolutely. and I needed space for it clearly. Yeah, man. I always say the bus, uh, the train always comes around. Yeah. Sometimes you jump on it and you're not prepared. Yeah. Next time it comes around... Prepare yourself so that you can stay on that. <laughs> and then it's going to, you know, and then you're going to get off again whenever, whenever that happens. And you're going to have to prepare yourself in other ways again. Yeah. And again and again and again. So. Manny, Mer <laughs> Manny Mariquin, ladies and gentlemen. Man, what would you put in my coffee? <laughs> Blueberries. <laughs> it's Cheers. delicious. Cheers, by the way, Manny. Salute. So good to see you. What's your favorite thing about me, Manny? Besides your great looks. <laughs> you're an entrepreneur. And I hope that your listeners take the, you know, because it's easy for like someone like me because they're like, oh, X amount of Grammys, X amount of this. X. But with you, you're an, a true entrepreneur. It's like, oh, yeah, you started this and that. But what you're doing on a daily basis, what you're building, people may not see. Yeah. And I just want everyone to know that you are the true entrepreneur. You are the 2023 version of a true entrepreneur. And we're talking about Khaled and, you know, and and 
people that are not in that box. And I yeah. and, and what people can take away when you do these interviews is the personality and you're trying and information and person, you know, and what you're trying to get out of that person as you're interviewing them. But listen, you're a true entrepreneur and that's something that I think everybody should have just enough, you know? Thanks Manny. I know 20 bucks. I appreciate you, bro. Way more than that. Seriously, (laughs) dude, you, you inspire me and uh, and I feel lucky to have you uh, as a friend. Damn, uh, are we about to, to make out? To, no, that's yeah. why there's microphones, and I told Christian at least four feet distance, and I've got to cover my biceps. Go. i got to cover my biceps. Sprinting. But, I mean, dude, you know what's so funny? You and I have done a couple projects here at Larrabee together, and I always bring you hard ones. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, we I don't know how go. you pull it off. That was amazing. I'm like, I, I feel like, and thanks to my team, my awesome Great team. Great team, hell yeah. Because uh, yeah. I feel like all of our projects, I'm like, okay, so this is going to be big and yeah, there's gonna be a lot of people and a lot to organize and and it could be chaos if not done exactly perfect it was amazing i mean from at least from <laughs> from my point of view i mean i just i get a full report and it was incredible it was fun man we have a good you know, time hey listen you you just thank your team and and i feel like we're only as good as our team 100 percent. Right? so thank you to the team of course but us real, you realizing that, and I realize that I've been talking about myself the whole time, but I do want to thank my team because without them at Larrabee, at Verse, my assistant engineers, I, I, I wouldn't have the opportunity to do what I do. So, for sure, shout outs to the definitely the greatest teams, you know. Oh my god, yeah, and yeah, and and big shout outs to, to the team at Verse because I'm so happily fed. <laughs> <sighs> we got to go, team. I got to take the team to Verse, yeah, yeah, I know. Come on, well, we've been. You haven't, have, have you, you, no, base hasn't properly eaten verse yet. No, really? Oh, fuck. When we did this, when oh we did our gosh. session here at Larrabee the other day, base came up to me dead serious and base is a foodie. And he came up to me dead serious. He's like, I just had the best croissant of my life. <laughs> oh, those croissants. This, oh, what is God. this? So we have, uh, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. Can you get That's us, some, the, can you get us some yeah, croissants, right, bro? Okay, we, we will. F- He's Lebanese. It's, it's, it's pretty much France. Yeah. It was, you know, <laughs> it's France. Used to be France kind yeah, of, yeah, right? Yeah. The France of the Middle East. Getting, <laughs> the Paris of the Middle East. We're definitely getting some croissants. Yes, that's, yes. That's for sure. But you got to come. You got to come. I know it looks like I'm looking into the camera. Yeah. <laughs> right into the <laughs> like camera. You got to come, you too. Gotta, hey, you got to come. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody does need to go to Verse, though. It's an experience. Oh, my God. You know, doesn't I don't know if it, that exact experience exists anywhere else in the world. Yeah. And I'm not saying it just to, for you guys to come, but yeah, you should come. Come experience it. And it's all word of mouth, too, because, I mean, I, uh, we have Mike uh, that does a lot of our internal PR, but we haven't hard, hired a company, out an outside company, to help us with PR or marketing or any of that. It's all internal. For so sure. So when word of mouth, you know, works, it's the most effective marketing, period. 100%. Of course, it's hard and it's not, you know, but when you have a product that's undeniable, and hopefully we, hopefully we, have built an environment that's unique enough that it will be sustainable, you know? So, I mean, you did it. I went there the other night and I got all excited because I walked in and Dave Grohl walked in. Oh, that's right. And sat, and sat at the table, one table away from me to eat. And I was with my friends and I was like, hell yes. <laughs> that means that Manny's friends with him. That means I'm going to get the warm intro to Dave Grohl. We're about to be best friends. Yeah. And then you came up to the table and said hi to me and my friends. I was like, what's up? I was like, man, Dave Grohl's right over there. I see you. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, isn't that crazy? And I was like, why do you think that's crazy, Manny? You're like, well, that's crazy that he's here. I'm like, you didn't know he was coming? And you were like, no. And I was like, you're not friends with him? You're <laughs> like, like no, I haven't done Foo Fighters. I'm like, you haven't done Foo Fighters? Damn it, I'm not getting the warm intro. I was so selfish. It's like, and I was like, well, you're and I was like, I already know you. You're not going to go introduce yourself. You're like, no, it's not. No, like, no. God, you know, Kid Manny. Cuddy. So Kid Cuddy, I've done Man on the Moon 1, 2, and 3. Amazing. And I never met him because he, oh, really? he always gets notes from either emails or calls. And he just he's never been to the studio. It's yeah. always been through someone, right? Uh, he shows up with this famous actor, and I, I'm going to butcher his name. But anyways, they sit at one of the high tops, and Matias, my son, is like, oh, he's here. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to go say hi to him. So I approach him. I'm like, hey, Manny, Marigold. He's like, Manny, oh, my gosh, right? But he apparently made a reservation on an open table as a, as a <laughs> with an alien. So, so like, man, I'm so happy you're here. How did how did you end up here? It's like, well, just made her a, a friend of mine said, is, I need to come here, and I just made it on an open table. And so, I mean, so you got so Dave Grohl and Kid Cudi just showing up on open yeah, table. Yeah, being yeah. Like, I heard this place is delicious. Yeah, yeah. 
and you know, with when we were Good doing that, music. well, with that, uh, yeah. we we brought him over and we sat in the corner, and he's like so blown away, right? Nice. So blown away. And he called me the next day. He's like, man, I got good news and bad news. I'm like, fuck, he's firing me. <laughs> it's like, what's up? He's like, all right, good news is uh, I'm going to be there, blah, blah, blah. Let's work on the next song. Great. Bad news. Bad news is I want to go to your restaurant again. I'm like, why is that bad news? That's like good news and really good news. Yeah. It's like bad news is because I'm going to be bugging the shit out of you because I want to be going, I'm going to be going there almost every night. And I'm like, so then his guy, his security guard is like, you know, I've been with him X amount of years and he's never been to a restaurant. I've, I've never been to a restaurant with him because, you know, obvious reasons. Yeah, yeah. But yet he felt comfortable Amazing. enough in the corner that nobody, nobody, not one single person knew he was even in the building. That's so know? cool. You know, the lights are dim and the sound, the, the noise cancellation system, it yeah. kind of gives you an illusion of just being there on your own. On your, your own, party. yeah, yeah. So nobody looks around. No one's not. It's not like other restaurants in Hollywood where you're like, Who's going to be there tonight? Or is yeah. the paparazzi's outside? Hopefully it stays that way, you know? I mean, it's funny because I've even, I've, I met Herbie Hancock there. I, you know, I saw oh Grohl there. I saw all this stuff and it's like, and, but I still, when I was there the other night, I'm not looking around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. it was, I only saw Dave Grohl because he walked right past me. And everyone just went. And he, and he went like this with his <laughs> yeah. hair. And I was just like, oh. I know. His yeah. hair's so, <laughs> he's like just <laughs> levit, just flowing in. <laughs> he's, he, I mean, he's. And I knew Grohl. Taylor. Like I was friends with Taylor Hawkins, you yeah, know, so yeah, yeah. I was, that was like the only thing that I could have said to him is just been mm -hmm. like, Hey man, I was, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I'm not about to fucking say Oh, that it's anymore. tough. It's tough. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, Taylor. But not, but the yeah, greatest. rest in peace. And yeah. But thanks. Thanks for always being supportive. You know, of course, that's, man, that's, I brought it. I brought a shitload of people. I've done like yeah, two yeah, birthdays yeah. there already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to do, I, I did two private versus dinners during COVID. Mm -hmm. Just me and my That's friends right. in the restaurant. That's that right. was some baller shit. So thanks. You know, and like last night we celebrated Lizzo. It was the Lizzo camp and yep. we had dinner, celebrated the record of the year win. And, and everyone's like, no, we want to do it at verse. You know, yeah. they're like, let's celebrate let's go. Yeah. But we want to do it at verse. So that, you know, from Ricky Reed it. saying, no, we want to do it here. It's the spot. It's just man. like, you know, it's, it's like, it's you like did I it. built it for all of us. Right. You did it. It's all the homies just to feel safe and comfortable yeah. and, and you feel free. Like For sure. We had one, the girl was there last night, and then he, you know, Terrence was there, and they exchanged info, and then with Wanda and Ricky, and all of a sudden she's, it's just a place to, awesome. you know, hopefully they'll cook up, and who knows, something some cool may happen. That's well, like the dream right there, you know? You did it. Nice work. <laughs> nice work, Doing Manny. it, doing it. Let's go. We are doing it. Yes. Well, yes. thanks for the time. Thank you. Always great talking with you, bro. I'm proud of myself. I didn't curse too, too much. No, it was it was no, moderate. Was good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think everything. Fucking was fine. shit. The fucking shit. The fucking shit. I yeah. didn't say. I didn't say. Any if of you're that, in, if you're offended by Manny, <laughs> just hit us in the comments. Oh gosh. Um, oh, negative be, thoughts are welcome. Be nice. Be nice. Just kidding. We are a happy community <laughs> of music loving friends. <laughs> Jump card. Much love, bro. Thank Thanks, you, Manny. Yeah, thank you for having me. God, dude. <laughs>